So we are here in the SharePoint site, and I want to show you what it looks, what it means to have that list component installed. And notice it's a site, it's, this is a, actually this demo, this is the top site of a site collection. So this, I think the, and my, my SharePoint dev skills have depreciated a little bit in the last couple of years, but they're getting a little bit sharper now again. Um, but I think what happens is this solution, the list component is installed as a solution at the site collection level. So we're on the demo site, top site of a site collection. If I go to site actions and look at site settings for this site, where this thing will show up, it's a solution. Upload and manage solutions, contain additional functionality and templates for sites. And this thing here, this is the CRM list component. This is actually a, let's see, what are the properties of this thing? Yeah, notice it's a WSP. Uh, it's a SharePoint solution format file. So this, that's what this thing is, this list component. And remember what I showed before. If I go to all site content, remember I said that, okay, you, you'll have account. And notice you'll see full document libraries for account, invoice, opportunity, project. So where do those come from? Well, let's go back to, uh, if I go to one of my sites, let's go to, uh, let's go to my production SharePoint, or uh, CRM, and you can, I'll show you what I mean by different CRM organizations pointing to the same underlying SharePoint site for document management. So, settings, document management, remember I said that's where this thing is maintained from. If I go to document management settings, what I'm looking for when I go to document management settings is a SharePoint site that has the list component installed. This right here, recognize that, that's our, the site where the list component is installed. And notice I've got account checked in here. Scroll down. Invoice. See it? A little further, there's opportunity. There's project. There's a custom entity called project. I've got documents turned on for that. And service activity. But notice sales literature not turned on. Okay? So that's why if we looked, when we look back here, that's why you saw account, invoice, opportunity, all that sort of thing. But now, Let's go to my, let's go to my, actually this one will be fine, okay. I'm in a different CRM organization here. This is not my production anymore. This is one of the 30 day free trials. If I go to settings, document management here, let's configure this and I want to suppose what I want to do now is I'm in a different CRM organization. I've got credentials to get to the SharePoint and I want to turn on document management here for sales literature. I want that capability of having a document library and SharePoint associated with sales literature. So I'm going to come in here. Notice here everything's unchecked except for sales literature. Okay. And let's see what else I might turn it on for. Let's suppose I want to do document management for products. Collaborating in SharePoint, I've got product literature that needs to be turned on. So now I've got the site entered here. The site has the list component installed. I click next. Here is where we configure our taxonomy. So this is what I was saying about notice. This is very specific. If I want a taxonomy or a folder structure in SharePoint that's based on a record type, it's not a requirement, but if I do, I've got two options here, account and contact. This is a little confusing the first time you see this, right? Because even though this is my folder structure, those aren't the only entities I can track. Remember I turned on document management for a lot of other record types too. It's just that this determines the folder structure. So if I select account here, see what's going to happen. Click next. It's going to go through. And then it'll tell me that document libraries are being created in the path. So basically it tells me this, it's, it's, that's the site that I'm pointing at, that demo site. And it kind of warns me that it might take a while, but depending upon how many you 
created actually doesn't take too long. So I've requested that account product and sales would be created, but sales literature actually was already turned on, but product was not done, so it says it succeeded. And what it created, what it tried to create, was three document libraries, and it only created one because product was the only one that wasn't created yet. So now I finish. Okay, now what did it just do? Let's go here and refresh. So I'm going to go back to my SharePoint site, look at all site content. Now notice I've got a new document library for product that was created one minute ago. If I go in there, there's nothing in here yet, but that was that's the automatic document library creation. That's the configuration bit from CRM to SharePoint. But now what that means though is that I can go in here and work with any of those record types. So if I go to sales and I go say to products, now I don't have any products here, but let's go through this process and see what happens if I create a product. So I create a new product. So I'm, you know, the scenario here is, you know, I'm maintaining the product catalog from um, actually I should probably do I'm going to call this uh, Dynamics CRM Training. Suppose that's a product, okay? And I'll give it a default unit group. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to spend a lot of time configuring the product catalog here, but I just want to get enough information to save. Decimal supported, of course. Got to have that. And list price is 100 bucks. Just want to save a record, okay? Because I checked documents because I turned on document management for products. I've now got that documents link on the left hand side. Remember there's a couple of places where we didn't see it in another organization. We didn't see it on opportunities. And if I click here, notice this is the same experience we saw before. This product does not yet have a folder created for it. So it says it's going to create a folder. If I click OK, what we've done is we're creating a folder within the product document library on the SharePoint site and then it associates that with this record. So if I go over to SharePoint and now let's uh, refresh here. So I'm in the product document library and now I've got a folder here for dynamic CRM training for that product. So any documents related to that gives me a nice organized way to store them here. Okay, So, a couple of things about that. If I go over to my production environment, and I go to sales, go to products, I'm not a heavy user of the product catalog, but we use it in a couple of ways. Right? This is one way that a services firm might use it, you just have different products for your different hourly rates. It helps people price opportunities. Okay, or you know, daily consulting services, training, or whatever, or CSA fees for dynamic CRM online. But the point is, if I open one of these products, notice the difference. Notice that no document choice here. So everybody see what, this, what that means? So these two di different dynamic CRM organizations, both are configured to use, they're pointing to the same SharePoint site, but I don't have to have documents turned on the same way in each. Just because I've got products using hooked up for document management in my little demo organization doesn't mean they're going to be hooked up in this organization. So the customizations from the different CRM organizations are independent. I could turn on document management here if I wanted to. I could go to customize, customize the entity. Here I'd have to go into the entity and customize it. And document management is just a little checkbox. Come in here. Go down to document management. You see that? Turn it on. Save it. Publish it. When it's done, this does actually take a while to do sometimes. And when it's done, document management is going to be turned on for products, for the product record type in this dynamic CRM organization. Pointing to the same place. It's not going to create it twice. 
So you would have to have some management around that too, but you can have different CRM organizations updating the same, the same document library. Now I'm going to show you one more thing here, show you what's kind of interesting about this. This is my um, demo organization. Okay? And I've turned on, remember, support for document management here for, say, United Training. Okay, so I've got document management for the account. Okay. If I go to Opportunities, and I go to an opportunity for United Training, real quickly, quickly what I want to do here is I want to customize Opportunities here to turn on document management at this level. Because if I create a document, or if I create an opportunity, I want to show you how it creates that, how it uses the taxonomy in SharePoint to store that associated with the account record. So I'll go ahead and save that. So I'm turning on document management for opportunity record type in this demo organization. Publish those changes, and now when I go out and refresh the form, you'll see documents there on the left-hand side. Now I refresh. Remember where we are. We're on an opportunity record in a dynamic CRM. The opportunity record's a child record. So it's a pa it's parent is this United Training. So if I create a new document folder for this record, it sees that there's not one created yet. You see what it's going to do? It's going to name this folder. It's kind of funky name. And you got to be a little bit careful about this. What I'll actually do is let me cancel. I'm going to give it a shorter name because these sample names are kind of hokey. Go to Documents. I'll go ahead and create it now because I want to show you what this does. We are here. Let's go to look at all site content. And what I want to do is navigate through the account, through United Training. And notice now there's a folder for Opportunity. And notice there's now a folder for Opportunity 1. So this is where it used that, that hierarchy, starting with account. So even though I don't have to have an opportunity related to an account. It could be related to a contact. If I do, it'll put it in the hierarchy. It'll, it's effectively SharePoint's kind of leveraging the one-to-many relationship. And the, okay, now what I want to show you, we've got a couple minutes left, perhaps. I want to show you this thing here, this contextual search thing. Any questions about that automatic folder creation? I know I'm, I'm going through this fast, but if you have questions, ask me and I'll make the recording available. Um, I'm going to show you this. This is standard, very standard JavaScript code, and it basically runs when this thing changes. It also runs when the form is loaded. And I'll show you what code like this looks like, because if you haven't seen this before, this is a, definitely should be in your bag of tricks for customizing dynamic CRM. So we're on an account form here. Dynamic CRM forms can have script libraries associated with them. If I go to form properties, bring up the form properties dialog, you'll see I can have different libraries. These are form libraries that would be available in the form. And I've got this TB utility functions library. And down here, I can see which functions within those libraries have been added as handlers for different controls on the form. So I look at the form onload event, and I see that this display website in iframe, you can probably guess what that function does, right? Is added as a handler for the onload event, and it's also been added as a handler for the change event of the external information, oh that's the tab, sorry, of the selected data, a better way to navigate to it. I want to go to the control. So I'll go to the external information tab, this here, and if I can't remember the name of that thing, I just go to the option set and uh, open it directly so I can see what the, this is the most obvious place. Here we go. So the option set, when I choose something, fires an event. There's your display website in iframe. And what this thing looks like is this. Um, and it might be hard to see it. But this right here, here's your money shot. Again, apologize for the small font. Um, but basically what this is doing, the switch statement here in JavaScript, is basically taking information from the form 
using this new XRM page object model, you know, syntax, new and dynamic CRM 2011, and it constructs the URL and then uses the iframes, iframes got a set source method that updates with that URL. So this, this is the standard trick for how you do this, and I'll, uh, I'll post this, I'll write it, I gotta write this up on the blog. So if you're interested in the details of that, I realize I'm going through it quickly here, but I'll post that and you can get to that code up there. So that's the standard trick for how you're going to dynamically update the URL and update the source of an iframe with it.